a todos. Aquí estamos con Oscar. Vamos a practicar inglés hoy. How are you, my friend? I'm very good, Kyle. What about you? I'm very well. I really love to do these conversations, so I'm very happy to meet you, and I'm very excited to see what kind of interesting things we can talk about today. Yeah, that'd be great. So let's get okay. started. Excellent. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Oscar. I'm from Colombia. I'm 19 years old. And, you know, to be honest, I'm a, I'm a language lover. Uh, so that's why I, I also speak other languages uh, like Portuguese. And I'm also learning French. And I could tell that you are learning French as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's very good. Uh, so, yeah. And I also uh, teach English uh, as a profession. Well, I teach uh, private lessons, you know, because... English, it's one of my favorite languages. And I was like, well, why not? I mean, I want to teach it. So that's that's what I'm doing. Now I see. Now I see why your English is so good. All right, man. That's that's so cool. So when did you start learning English? Um, actually, it was uh, six years ago uh, when I was at school. And that uh, I'm a very curious person. So the fact that I didn't learn English at school uh, <laughs> I decided to just, you know, learn English on my own. And just uh, when I had, you know, the possibility to have a very good internet connection, I was like, okay, let's give her a shot. And I started learning and, uh, you know, here we are. Okay, very cool. You, you mentioned to me before in a comment that, or maybe the email that you think comprehensible input is a great way to learn languages. How did you find out about comprehensible input? Definitely. And you know, this is this is really funny because I started learning English on my own, just as everybody else, like, you know, studying grammar drills, using uh, books and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I just studied that for about five months and I got bored. And I was like, well, th there is no way that this is the only way to learn English. So I just went on uh, YouTube and, uh, you know, just uh, I look for different ways to learn English. And one of them was comprehensible input. And I watched a conference by Stephen Krashen that, you know, is the author of the hypothesis of uh, comprehensible input. And I was like, man, this is so fascinating. You know, it's like very cool just to, to see how can you learn English in a natural way. Mm -hmm. But I did it, you know, I did it for about three, three years like that because I didn't study grammar anymore. And I started watching a lot of videos on YouTube with subtitles. And mm -hmm. after those three years, I realized that that was called comprehensible input. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't have to be videos like mine where I talk with yeah. my hand or draw things. If you understand it, it's comprehensible input. And that could be awesome shows on Netflix. That could be a YouTube video about your hobbies, whatever you're into. Yeah. And that's, that's the coolest thing about it. it. It, there's always something interesting that you could find and learn about. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Super cool. So, so you teach English as well. Do you teach online or do you have students at a school? How do you teach English? Uh, I teach on my own, which means I find my own students, so I don't work for any institution. I teach mainly online. And I'm going to tell you something very funny, that I, I find your YouTube channel because of Mr. Salas, you know? So <laughs> I'm a, I follow Mr. Salas, and I watch all his videos. And uh, when he uploaded this new video, like YouTube channels uh, to learn using comprehensible input, uh, I mean, you were one of the greatest YouTube channels that I've ever found. Because I was like, oh, wow, this is so interesting, you know? And uh, the fact that you are native, it makes it so wonderful because it's just like a way to create uh, an environment where you just, you know, absorb English in a natural way. And, and, you know, I decided to... And I wanted to talk to you about it because I actually use your videos uh, to teach my students. I was like, wow. you know, I'm, I'm an English teacher, but I don't like to teach in a very uh, traditional way. So mm -hmm. I tell him, you know, 20% grammar, 80% exposure into the language. And uh, I have like 
comprehensible input uh, level one, it's your videos, basic level. And then we got the intermediate level, level two. And I just tell them, well, right after this class, you're going to go to YouTube. You're going to look for the YouTube channel, Pensando Inglés. And then you're going to watch as many videos as you as you can, because that, that's the way to go, you know, just learn in a very natural way with him. And that's a great YouTube channel. So to be honest, I, I really recommend your YouTube channel to everybody. Thank you so much for that, man. That, that makes me feel so, so happy and so proud that it's helping people who really want to learn and that you you think that it's good enough content that you want to share it. Really, I appreciate that so much, man. That, that's so cool. That's why I do all this. Well, that's great, man. And I really appreciate everything that you do because it's really hard just to, you know, being a beginner in a, lang in a language, uh, especially English, it's really hard just to find content that it's comprehensible, you know, because uh, to learn a language, the content uh, needs to be compelling and comprehensible. And, and when I started watching your videos, I mean, I had, I had so much fun, you know, because of your stories. Um, and I was like, oh, OK, so that's a very nice way because uh, learning English uh, through stories. It's um, very compelling and you can have a lot of fun while doing it, you know. So it's like, okay, so this is the right con that I can tell my students to follow because uh, finally I found a YouTube channel about it because I've never found a YouTube channel like that before. So that was, I was very happy just to promote your channel that way. Excellent. Super cool, man. So you, you said that you think it's it's great to learn through stories. It's very compelling. I agree. I've shared my own experiences, and now I like to tell stories from you know books or wherever I could find them. Is there any story that you would like to see a video about? Any I don't know, maybe a legend. What what would you like to see from my content? Well, that's a very that's a very good question, man. Um, I don't know. I, I I watch a couple of videos of yours. It's uh, they talk about wisdom, and I really love the topic. You know, because mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you are giving us advices and how to improve in our lives, I love that. So, from my point of view, a great topic that it'll be nice if you talk about in your YouTube channel. It would be about a uh, philosophy, but in English. Oh man, that that would be awesome because I love it. I love the topic. I love reading books about it, and that if you do it, well, I'm on. I'm in it. You know, I'm in. I'm yeah. in, and just I'm gonna watch it. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for that recommendation, and I I will certainly think about that and try to make a good video on philosophy. That's a very interesting topic. Thanks. Man. Okay, so I do have some questions for you. Let's see. So. Obviously, your profession is you're a teacher, you're an English teacher, but why did you want to start learning English? Was it because you wanted to become a teacher? Did you want to travel somewhere? Did you meet a cute girl who speaks English? What what happened? Why did you want to learn English? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, when you learn a language, uh, most of the time, it's not because of the reason that you wanted to do it. It's mm -hmm. because of something really different. Uh, in my case, it was, uh, as I said before, I'm a very curious boy. And I was like, you know, I got internet, but most of the information, it's in English. And uh, I love science. I I actually watch NASA's videos and all this kind of stuff, you know, related to the solar system and so on. So when, when I found out that the best information, uh, the best movies were in English, I was like, this is going to be a challenge, you know, but at the end, I was like, OK, let's do it. Let's do it, because I want to get access to that information, because in Spanish, it's it's really hard to find really good videos, you know, about the, the, the topics that I love to watch. So that, that was, I think, my main reason just to focus on studying English, because I was like, OK, uh, it, it was like a bridge, you know, to connect like I want this. And this is the bridge of the language, and this is the topic that I want to enjoy. So English was a, a connection, like a bridge. Yeah, that's that's why. Okay, that's a wow! What an intelligent 
Interesting answer. You were you were searching for knowledge. Yeah. Right? You're trying to access this knowledge, this information, so that you could learn more. That shows me how curious you really are, how you're always trying to acquire and learn more interesting things. That's that's so cool. Very cool. So now that you have a high level of English and you're teaching, is that what you want to do with your English in your future is keep on teaching, maybe get more and more students? Or would you like to maybe get a some sort of job in the, the science field and uh, use your English there, perhaps? Hmm, that's very nice to hear. Well, um, actually, uh, by the way, um, I'm getting a job very soon. I'm gonna work as an interpreter. So in that, that field, I'm gonna use my, you know, my skills. Awesome, uh, so I'm just waiting for it. And uh, as a part-time job, I'm gonna keep teaching English because I mean, it's something that I really love. So yeah, maybe I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna work as an interpreter and keep on teaching English. Okay, super cool, man. So what would that job be? Or would you be working for a certain company or uh, interpreting documents online? Do you know what, what kind of work you'll be doing? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, the main thing that you have to do is that, well, I work from home. I can work from home without any problem. And that I'm gonna translate of calls and video calls on life. So it could be, you know, talking about medical stuff, financial stuff, and we have a lot of fields. So mm. you just have to, you know, translate back and forth uh, on life. Wow. Okay, man. Super, super cool. And uh, this this conversation is is awesome to me because your English is so so high. I could just I I could speak freely and. Uh, I, I don't feel like there will be any topic we can't talk about that you won't understand. Well, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, very cool. All right. Let's see. I, I really like to, to talk about positive things and get some positivity going in these conversations. So could you tell me something in your life that you're very grateful for? Hmm. Okay. So first of all, I'm grateful for my family that they've been a great support in my life. Uh, and also, I'm very grateful of myself making the, uh, making the decision of studying languages and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and craving for knowledge all the time because it makes me feel like wonderful and happier because, you know, uh, when you learn, you, you become a better human being. So mm -hmm. when you do it, you you see like things in a very different way so that's why i follow up a lot uh, philosophy and how to live well uh especially i studied the stoic philosophy stoicism and i mean it's something that i really love so i'm really grateful that i made the decision of studying that um well right now and actually it happened this year i'm so grateful to to have found a, a very special person for me uh, this year uh my girlfriend you know and I'm so grateful for her because uh, we think very similarly and uh, I don't know, we, we kind of connect in a very quick way. I don't know, that was like, I don't know what happened, but it was very fast. And, but I'm so grateful because I, I have like future plans with her and uh, I'm planning to do great stuff. So yeah, I'm grateful for all the stuff. So in a nutshell, it would be my family, my girlfriend, and all, all decisions that, that I made in my life. Okay, man, very good, excellent, very good. So uh, one other thing that we have in common, I believe, is what a big part of our lives languages are, right? Huge, it's for me as well, every day, every day I'm either trying to help other people learn English or I'm practicing my Spanish or my French all of my future plans have to do with languages, growing this, yeah. you know. Right. So yeah. definitely I, I I understand how you feel about that. So how about this girlfriend, man? What what's her name? Well, her name is Kara, and he's from yeah. Colombia as well. Okay. Um and I mean she, she's starting to be an English teacher. <laughs> so you know, languages attract themselves per se. Uh -huh. They attract themselves. Yeah. Um 
So yeah, I mean, she she loves languages as well, uh, and she's she's traveling to the U.S. very soon uh, to a camp. So she's gonna work a little bit on her English, and and I help her uh, whatever I can. So I mean, it's just so much things in common, and uh, yeah, my 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 life it's about languages because mm -hmm. people tell me, people ask me like, what do you spare time? I learn languages. Uh, what, what do you do when you have nothing to do? I learn languages. Uh, what do you do? I teach languages. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's just like a passion for me and I really enjoy it. So uh, the fact that my girlfriend has some very similar. Yeah, that, that, that's why. That's why. I'm here. Super cool. Well, hello to Kara. Uh, and I'm so happy that you, you found someone who you could share your passions with. That that really can bring you a lot closer together, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that that's cool. Do you so you guys speak in English a lot together? <laughs> yeah, that's funny because well, yeah, I speak English with her like uh, I mean a lot of time in a day, uh, but I also combine all my languages. So it's funny when you know we laugh like whenever she doesn't understand when I'm speaking French or Portuguese, and I was like, oh, uh, what I'm what I'm saying is this. So I I try to tell her in English, but I mean she loves that environment that whenever we want we can just speak different languages all of a sudden, and we're just gonna have fun. We're just gonna try to you know joke around, and <laughs> but yeah, uh, we mainly speak in English because that's that's her target language. Excellent, man. That's that's great. I hope you guys can both work on your goals together and grow together and be very happy. Uh, so now that we're on the topic of relationships, OK, I was going to save this question for a little bit later, but we're talking about your relationships. So I'm going to ask you, maybe this is almost even a philosophy question, but it's it's very deep. OK. OK. What does it mean to love somebody? <laughs> I knew that was coming. Because <laughs> I, I watch, I watch your uh, the other interviews, and you ask that to to your subscribers. And, oh, and, I, and you know when I heard that question, when when you asked that question to the Mexican girl, I was like, wow, that's a very deep and nice question. So, what does it mean to love someone? Mm. Okay, so first. Uh, you have to have clear what is love to you, you know, because I'm going to tell you uh, the definition of love uh, for me, right? So I think love, it's a really powerful emotion that it's really important in human life. And that love, it's just a, it's just a connection that you generate with people, but not only with people, with the world itself. But if we're talking about specifically romantic relationships, it's a connection that you can generate with a certain person where you can just feel really comfortable. You can trust that person and that you know that it doesn't matter what happened in the future, that you are going to be there always. So when you love someone, you are just sharing a part of your life. And because you, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be just like, oh, I'm very arrogant and I just love myself and I don't need anybody else, you know? So I don't believe in that. I believe that you have to have a, first, a great self-esteem. That's very important in order to find a, a good person. Because, well, if you don't have a, a self-esteem, you're going to find a lot of bad people in the way. That's not available. So uh, in my case, I really worked hard on myself through knowledge, through a lot of conversations, just to have a balance in my life so I can decide, oh, okay, I'm going to look for love now because I'm ready, you know. So I did that. And uh, I feel that, well, I'm a, I'm a nice person. I consider that I've been working a lot on myself. And uh, now I can just look for somebody else that shares a lot of things in common with me and that I feel really comfortable with. Um, so I just feel like, well, we're individuals, but love just makes makes us like share a life together. And 
I'm not your possession. You are not my possession. We're just great people together sharing our time because that's what we want to do. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a complex question, man. But that's, uh, you know, sort of an answer that I can give you right now. Hey, my man, I'm going to have to put advanced in the title of this video. <laughs> this is going to be <laughs> Nivel Avanzado. <laughs> wow. But that great answer. And that right there is a language learning goal anybody watching to be able to express yourself like that about a topic so deep as love very well done my friend very well done Thanks. and i i agree 100 percent. before you go looking for love yeah. you have to be complete you have to be a whole person yourself and if you don't think like you said it's not about uh being conceited or arrogant but if you don't think that you are good and you deserve good things, you'll never find a good person to be with you and want to share that time. Yeah. So that's very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Very awesome. Uh, I, I, I like hearing your answer about that. So let's see. So you're from Colombia. What what city do you live in? Uh, I'm from Antioquia. It's, it's, it's a department. Uh, I was born in Puerto Trumpo, Antioquia, uh, but now I'm living in Manizales. Okay. All right. Yeah. So what is, what is your favorite thing about your country, about where you live? People, culture, people are so friendly. It's, it's something that I really love because I, well, personally, I talk to a lot of foreign people because that's what I do almost every day. And and I'm curious about getting to know the culture of somebody else. So that's why I spend some time on reading and also watch some conferences about it. Uh, so I would say that Colombian culture, it's so great because people are so friendly. People are so warm. So whenever you just, you know, you're just walking down the street and you feel kind of lost, you can feel free to ask, hey, uh, where, where's the nearest place or where's the bathroom or, you know, something like that when you're lost. Mm -hmm. And people, people gladly will answer you. And uh, it's very different when I'm when I'm talking, when I've talked to people from different countries uh, because of their culture, they're a little bit cold. And well, to be honest, I don't like that because I'm a Colombian boy and I, I'm not cold at all. <laughs> so I just like to be really extroverted, even though in the past, I was so introverted, man. That, that was a big change that I did in my life. Uh, but yeah, and also I love nature. Colombian nature, oh man, there is a lot of great places, you know, and talking about you know, special natural places, I love it. I'm a nature lover. I take photos as well. And I've done that. So I would say culture and uh, people itself culture yeah that, that's in natural places okay cool so i want to ask you one question you you mentioned that you were very in introverted when you were younger uh i'm going to share a little bit of my experience and see okay. if you can okay so when i was going to school high school growing up i was a very quiet child i didn't i had a couple friends not a lot i didn't speak up in class you know i just wanted to uh, be under the radar and, uh, you know, do my own thing and not have anybody bother me. But after I started learning Spanish and practicing speaking with so many people from around the world, I really came out of my shell, as they say, and uh, became a lot more extroverted. Do you think languages were a, a part of that transformation in you as well? You just hit the nail on the head, man. Yeah, that, that was the... That, that's why I, I just become, became so extroverted because of languages. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I can relate myself with your experience because it happened to me the same. I was just like, well, I'm not focused on, on speaking. I'm just going to finish my homework and that's all. I'm just, I was the, the man, you know, back in the corner, just, just you know, I don't want to talk to anybody else. Uh, but yeah, when I started learning English, I realized that, okay, so... What about if, you know, instead of talking to people here in Colombia, uh, what about if we talk to foreign people? Because, I, well, I don't know him, so I'm not going to be shy of talking to him, you know? Mm -hmm. like, ah. 
that's nice. So I did it. And that's funny because I talk to, to more foreign people than even to my Colombian friends. Well, mm. and when I did that, it just, I, I could show like a big improvement uh, in my personality. So talking about, you know, being uh, extroverted. So I was like, wow, I really love this. I like this. I like the effect that, you know, languages uh, do you make on me. It was like, hmm, yeah. So, and after that, I started being more extroverted with my Colombian friends, but mm-hmm. that's how it happened. You know, English opened open a lot of doors just to, to get in touch with people and develop this kind of skill, social skill. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. Very, very cool that we share that experience. Um, when I when I started learning Spanish, I, I started to feel so much more confident speaking with people even in English because if I could have an awesome conversation in my second language with somebody yeah. on the other side of the world, why can't I talk to somebody in English and you know be myself, be open, be yeah. confident? Mm-hmm. There you go. Wow, yeah. Very cool. And. Also, when you you start speaking to people from these other parts of the world, you start to learn about the world, you start to learn about other cultures, and you, I, I want to say inevitably, I, I feel like we're getting super advanced with the vocabulary and stuff, but you inevitably become a much more interesting and complete person, I think. Yeah, because I mean, when, when you talk to different people, uh, you are more open-minded. Because you try to be empathy with people and then try to understand them. And you learn to not judge people because of their cover, you know, because you just seem like, oh, that, that's, a, that's a bad or a good person. Well, I wouldn't say that that's the right way to go about things. So when you do it, when you get to surround yourself with people from different countries, from different cultures, uh, they, they have different beliefs. They have different religions. You kind of learn how to be neutral. And, Mm -hmm. you know, despite that you have your own religion, your own beliefs, you learn how to respect other people's beliefs and how they think. And you try to understand them better. So you become really open-minded and then you see the world just like, okay, I'm not only from Colombia, I'm from the whole world. That's how I see it now. Absolutely. I I feel as though I'm a student of the world, a student of life as well. And, you know, one thing I've I've learned and really observed from religion or not religion, from languages uh, and really French kind of opened the door to this as well, because with French, I've spoken to a lot of people from Africa. I've spoken to a lot of Muslims from uh, the Middle East, you know, a lot of people from Morocco and uh, like places like that who are Muslims and Arabs. I've learned that, yeah, we all have big differences, but people are really people, you know, we have the same problems. We all, you know, we, we all want human connection. We have friends and families. We have problems with our friends and families. So I think there's more things in common than there are differences between human beings, really. Yeah, exactly. Cause I mean, it's about levels, you know, um, when you say like, oh, I'm from X country and this is my culture. Well, I don't like to, to identify myself with, oh, you're a Colombian. Well, yes, I know I'm, I'm Colombian because I was born there, but I'm, I don't like fanatism. You know, I hate that, to be honest. So I just like to be open. It's like, oh, so for example, if somebody else tell me like, oh, aren't you going to help me because uh, I'm, I'm from this country? It's like, what are you talking about? I mean, you're a human being and I'm mm-hmm. a human being. So I, I don't care where you're from. I, I just care, uh, you know, the kind of person you are. So, yeah, that's that's very, you know, nice to to tackle things and just, you know, go with the flow and learn how to be a better human being. Exactly. Exactly. So what you like about Colombia is uh, beautiful nature, a yeah. warm you guys are very close you can be open with one another what is something that you do not like about Colombia jeez hmm. um okay this could be a little bit tricky because 
you know, um, Colombia, it's, it's very well known because of drugs. Um, and I don't really like the, the image that people have from Colombia in foreign countries. Um, I know that no country is perfect. I know that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Colombia, the, the security per se, it's a little bit crazy. You know, just if you're just walking down the street at night, you better be careful. You know, just just to, to know where you're just walking because it can happen things. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I just don't like the, how people see Colombia because, you know, once again, I talk to, to many people around the world. And when I say that I'm from Colombia, immediately they think drugs. I was like, man, man, th this is not, th that is not true. Well, so don't, don't close your mind just only on the continent you watch the news because mm -hmm. uh, most of the news are fake and that's how it works. So don't guide yourself because of news or newspapers and all this kind of stuff. If you've never been to Colombia before. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, this saying in English, like don't judge a book by its cover. You gotta go for it, and you gotta visit Colombia to realize how it is truly. So I don't like the the image that people have from Colombia. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to make Pablo Escobar jokes, you know. But yeah. Yeah. I don't like I that. So many kind, warm, amazing Colombians. So yeah, I, I obviously don't don't judge you guys like that, and I I can't wait to one day visit Colombia. So. When I do visit Colombia one day, what do you recommend that I do first? Where should I go? What should I see? Hmm. Well, it depends. I mean, what, what do you like to do when you travel first in, a, in another country? Okay, so you, you said there's beautiful nature there. If I want to yeah. see the most beautiful part of Colombia, what would you recommend? Wow, man. Um, okay, so... These are these very famous places in, in Colombia. Yeah, actually cities. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard about uh, Cartagena mm -hmm. in Santa Marta. Uh, they're very beautiful. To be honest, I've traveled there once because I, I, I don't travel a lot. Uh, and man, I mean, you can see like a lot of beautiful paradises there. It's so, so beautiful. It's so wonderful. So if you ever travel to Colombia, I would recommend you go to Cartagena, Santa Marta. Uh, and also, hmm, there, there is a place, there's actually a river. It's like the river of seven colors. And we have it in Colombia. Yeah, right now, I don't ever recall where is it exactly, but it's... If I'm not wrong, it's in Antioquia. Well, I have I have to look for it as well. Uh, but yeah, that, that's what it is. Uh, the River of Seven Colors, man. Go for it. That that's so beautiful. And I've never personally, I've never been to there, but uh, I've watched them like through videos and people tell me their experiences there, and it is so damn beautiful. Yeah, to be honest. Okay, very cool, man. I I just wrote that down because I gotta check that out later. I'm gonna have yeah, to. Yeah some videos of that for sure all right let's see so what is something that makes you very happy it could be something small for me a good good coffee makes my day a little better you know a good you're meal. Mine. <laughs> yeah you're in my mind because i'm a coffee lover yeah i love coffee and well i, I was living alone before uh like four months ago i was living alone i lived alone for two years and every single day, I would drink uh, three to four cup of coffee, cups of coffee every single day. And I mean, that, that is so cool. I, I just love it because I also practice uh, a lot of sports. I do sports and it helps me a lot to just, you know, get on it. It's like, oh, OK, let, let's do it. And that, that's like a reward after exercising. Just, you know, being there, very chill, very relaxed. And, and also when you're reading a book, you just lie there, just drinking coffee, you're learning, you're acquiring new knowledge. And yeah, I mean, I love that. I love coffee. OK, excellent. Yeah, it's, it's just a, a moment of peace in your day, you know, like you yeah, said earlier. Yeah. Uh, sure. yeah, okay. So 
you said reading a book. Do you read often? Yeah, every day. I do. Okay. Yeah, I, I started, you know, learning, well, reading books since I was uh, 14, uh, when I had access to internet, because it was kind of hard to to have physical books. And, and also, it was really limited, because, well, I could go to the library, but no topics that I really like. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. Uh, when I got internet, I was like, oh, this is this is all, this is all that I need to be a better human being. Because you know, internet, it's it's a powerful tool, but you have to use it wisely because otherwise mm-hmm. it's gonna backfire your your you know your willingness to learn something great, but at the end you just finished like learning, you know, crazy stuff there. Um, so I, I really focus on using internet wisely and I started reading since I was uh, 13. I started reading about science. Because uh, I also did some experiments, like Michael Faraday, uh, like Tesla, and I follow all of these great scientists, and I try to follow <laughs> their steps, and and also try to to create these kind of experiments at home, and well, that was kind of cool for me. Um, so yeah, since that time, I I kept I kept reading it. I mean, until now. Okay. Very cool. Do you have a, a favorite book? Hmm. Oh, that's that's a hard question. Definitely. Um, I wouldn't say I have a favorite book. I would say that I love many books because I, I don't want to to just separate this book from the other ones. No, I just love. I've read a lot of wonderful books, but one specially that I'm currently reading. And it's so, so good that I would say, I would buy this book and I would take it with me anywhere. Uh, the title is uh, Living as a Stoic. Okay. Uh, it's okay. like 30, yeah, 366 uh, quotes. And that uh, they give life from Mar- Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus and those kind of philosophers. Uh, that they would uh, write their thoughts about something and then you can learn from that ancient knowledge. So, yeah, I love that because it's very easy to digest and very easy to comprehend. Okay. Uh, I'm writing down right now Marcus Aurelius because you reminded me that I have his book, uh, Reflections, I believe it's called in English. Uh, Meditations. Yes. Yes. I have. Uh, yeah. It's good. It's a good book. And I, I think maybe I'll make yes. a video about that soon. Uh, today at 4 30, I'll be making, I have a video made already about this is Mr. Salas's book. Mr. Salas's book. Yeah. So uh, I have a video coming out today talking about that. Pretty interesting stuff. He, he knows his stuff when it comes to language learning. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He knows. Okay. So. We, we discussed something that makes you happy, a good cup of coffee, that, that relaxation and enjoying it. What's something that makes you angry? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Well, it's, it's how I am that it's, well, my values as a human being, you know, that I follow, it's, for example, commitment and punctuality. So whenever I have a a meeting with somebody else, you better be punctual because I really care about it. You know, so that's why I I got right into it when you sent me the link because I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, because that for me, it's it's a way to, it's a way of respect. So if you, if you attend a meeting on time, you're showing me that you respect me. Mm -hmm. So Whenever I just, you know, try to get in touch with friends and some people and they don't get on, they, they don't, they are not on time. It's like, oh, come on, man. If you're not here in 10 minutes, I'm done. I'm gone. <laughs> and I, actually, I apply the same for my classes. I tell my students, well, time, it's really important for me because, well, it's valuable. It's cold. So if you don't show up on time, at least, well, I'm going to give you a chance of showing up at least 10 minutes late, but if you don't do it, reschedule class. Mm-hmm. So that is probably something that annoys me the most, uh, that 
punctuality and commitment. Because if you say, oh, I'm going to do this, but you don't do it because you didn't want to or you forgot it. Oh, man, that's what am I doing? You know, what are we doing? So, yeah, I would say that that's that's very in part for me. OK, yeah, I, I agree, because and I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way. My time is very valuable. Yeah. Time, they say time is money, but it's even more than that. Time is just knowledge. Yeah. Time is power. Time is everything. So if you'll waste my time, that's like spitting on me. You know, that's so, yeah. so disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree completely, man. Very, very good. Okay. All right. Now this one's good because I, I, I want to hear you express yourself on this one. I like this question. Okay. What is what is your biggest fear? <laughs> My biggest fear. All right. So yeah, I have it here. So my biggest fear, it's not to grow every day as a human being, and just just being stuck. So that that that's my biggest fear. Just you know, not growing as a human being, not trying to be better, not trying to be better, or. Because I know a lot of people that they give up, you know, they give up in life and they're like, oh, no, I'm lazy. I don't want to improve. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Uh, to be honest, I feel myself as a like a plant, you know, I have to water the plant every single day just to be better step by step. And that's why I follow also a philosophy called Kaizen, you know. It's Japanese uh, philosophy, and it's about improving 1% every single day. So mm -hmm. when you do it, at the end of the year, it's even more than 300%, you know, you're a better human being. So, yeah, I think that that's my biggest fear, just to feel stuck, to, to lose hope in life, just to, to not want to learn. Mm -hmm. be, oh, man. I mean... If that happens one day, it's because I am not Oscar. <laughs> because I mean, it does, for me, it's just very important to keep growing, growing every single day. In every aspect of your life, not only knowledge or being, you know, wiser now, you have to grow uh, emotional intelligence. Um, you have to work on your social skills, also, your relationships that are very important, especially a family connection. Um, and that, that's all. I mean, when you have all of these things uh, like cover, you feel really good. Like mm -hmm. talking about financially, your relationships, emotional intelligence, uh, future plans. I like to be very organized. So <laughs> uh, when I was younger, I, I would just write like a like a journey per se and i would just copy or write down all the all of my goals and all the specific steps to follow in order to get it uh, to achieve that um so yeah well i think that, that that's all that i can say now okay yeah all right yeah i, I can relate to that for sure and uh so i assume you have a list of goals right still to stay, <laughs> yeah. of course Okay. Yeah. That is so important. And so many people do not have a goal written down. And I do not understand how they live their lives this way. I've tried to tell friends, like, you have to write down your goals. All the successful people in this world know what they want. They know how they're going to get it. And they work on it every day. So if you're not willing to write down your goals, you'll never achieve anything. Facts. Yeah. And, you know, this is actually very interesting because... One of, one of the, well, this is my main goal, and it's related to languages. Uh, I want to speak at least 10 languages fluently, and I'm on my way. <laughs> so right now, I'm just, I'm just tackling French. Um, I know that you speak, you speak French better than me, but, well, because I heard you. You were not, you were not, interview, you were never being a polyglot, and he spoke several languages. Uh, French was one of them, and uh, I hear your French. Well, you have a very good understanding. Uh, you could speak even way better than me because I'm a beginner. I started learning French uh, three months ago. I understand a lot, but you know, speaking it's it develops uh, through time. And actually, your Spanish it's also really good. When I heard your Spanish uh, from the beginning, I was like, wow. Well, you kind of have a 
a great fluency with your Spanish. Uh, your pronunciation is on point. It's very easy to understand your ideas. So yeah, I admire you how you manage to learn Spanish that way. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, my, my Spanish is a lot better than my French. And, you know, <laughs> I've been putting so much time into the YouTube lately that I haven't had a whole lot of time to practice my French. So uh, my French is a little little rusty right now, but I, I do. I love the language. I think it's beautiful. But something I found a, a little bit difficult with French is the, the lack of content. You know, uh, for example, if if you watch a show on Netflix, for for example, a Colombian show or a Mexican show, there's a hundred episodes in a season almost, you know? So that's so much time and input. But in French shows, there's like six or seven episodes each season, I found. Yeah, talking about shows, yeah, you're right. Uh, but it also depends on what really interested you. Because in my case, I found a lot of YouTube channels. Uh, they talk about the universe and science in French. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm I'm on it all day, every single day. It's like okay, so today we're gonna learn about how the solar system works or how the the James Webb telescope is going. You know, <laughs> so I'm just I'm I'm just on it, and I love it. I mean, despite that, I don't understand everything. I understand most of it. And I have fun. And this is like real natural exposure into the language. So, you know, actually comprehensible input, that, that's that's all for me as well. That, that's what mm -hmm. I tell my students. Well, if you really want to learn a language, you just, you have to use comprehensible input. Okay, what's that? Well, you have to choose, you know, uh, your favorite topic, but instead of studying your favorite topic in your native tongue, just change into your target language. That's all you, that you can do, man. Just just try to create a like a like a fictional environment of your target language at home. It is possible. Exactly. That that's that's how I learned Spanish. That's how I learned yeah. French. That's the way. Cool. All right. So, what is an important lesson that you have learned in your life from a difficult situation or a difficult time? <sighs> So actually, right now, I'm in a very difficult situation. Uh, but what I learned is that to be calm, uh, just to, to face hard situations in life. Well, because life is like a roller coaster, you know, up and down all the time. And uh, from my point of view, what you need to do is that you need to be quiet. You need to be calm. You you kind of have to accept that life, I mean, it is what it is in that it's very uh, temporary. Um, and I don't know, just, 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 you know, that calmness, just like, I was like, okay, so I'm getting through a very hard situation right now, but now I just have to think, what can I do? You know, instead of focusing on the problem, focus on the solutions, that's one thing. And also just to, I mean, even if you have problems in real life, everybody has problems. You have to learn how to live peacefully. Mm -hmm. Please, don't be worried all the time. Don't tell me like, oh, I lost my job. I don't have money to buy this. Or, well, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, buy food tomorrow. It's hard. Yeah. But at the same time, you kind of have to learn how to go with the flow, how to live well, despite all of the situations that, you know, maybe they're hard for you. So, yeah, I'm just like very chill. I'm chill. I'm just looking for the solutions. I, I just, whenever a hard situation comes or came up, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to use word. So I'm going to just throw all my ideas. I'm going to let my ideas out and I'm just going to plan what can I do to solve that. And well, that, that's why I feel really chill, despite of <laughs> having a bunch of problems behind me. Um, but yeah, I would say that. Okay, great. Yeah, you, you have to be calm in the middle of the storm, no matter what's going on around you. And I, I guess you've learned a lot of that from stoicism. Um, yeah. How old did you say you were? 
I'm 19. 19. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. I was not this wise when I was 19, man. <laughs> that, that's so great that you, uh, you're, you're searching for this wisdom and this knowledge from a young age, you know, when you're, you're an older man, when you're in your thirties and older, you're going to have such a, a head start and an advantage on a lot of people who did not start learning these valuable lessons early. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm, and I'm really hoping for that just to, to be a, a better human being every day. And uh, I don't know, maybe when I'm 40, I'm going to be nicer, <laughs> you know, just, just better. You're going to be better for sure. And you'll probably be speaking a lot of languages, I imagine. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hope so. So what does it mean for you to be successful? What, what will you want in your mm -hmm. life before you consider yourself to be a successful man? <laughs> well, okay, so mm, a man uh, can be successful when he's the owner of his own mind. <laughs> That's all. Because, well, okay. it, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how much friends you have, but at the end of the day, if you don't understand yourself, you're not, if you're not really connected with yourself, and if you are just sad all the time, well, it's a waste of time, to be honest. So I would say that you have to be the, the owner of your mind. You have to be the owner. You just have to, you know, learn how to use it, how, how to use it well, properly. And uh, just so when you have this working for you, because, you know, most of the time and yesterday, actually, I was reading uh, a document about uh, how many thoughts do we have every single day? And researchers said that it was about uh, 60,000 thoughts every single day. And you know what? Just 5% conscious thoughts. Mm -hmm. Just 5% to be conscious. Oh my goodness. So you just have to really look after that 5% and make it yours just to have a better life. Because if you have this right, well, you see the, the world from a very nice perspective and you don't have a problem. So that, that is success for me. I've, I've been working on it. Excellent, man. That, that's great. Do you know who Earl Nightingale is? Have you heard of him? Uh, what's that again? Earl Nightingale. Have you heard of this man? I have no idea. Okay, later I'll write his name and send it to you. I really recommend that you listen to him, okay? Oh, well, wow. thank you. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He, he is, uh, he's dead now. He, he was, uh, he was popular in the, the fifties and the sixties, but he said that a man is successful when he knows where he's going and he knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants. Basically it can be summed up. Like you said, when a man is the owner of his own mind, he's successful. And uh, yeah, I, I think you you might really enjoy listening to his content. Pure wisdom, pure wisdom. Oh wow, that's cool for me. Yeah. So uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll send you that later because uh, it's kind of a weird name. So I'll, I'll type that out for you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First time I heard about it. So we talked about success. You you say it's about controlling your mind, and I agree that that's the start once you control your mind it's all done the battle's over you won now it's about creating your life getting what yeah. you want mm -hmm. so so okay. talking about that what do you think about money what what's your money philosophy is it important is it not that important is it good is it bad what do you think about money money a very controversial topic um Money, uh, believe it or not, it's very important nowadays because of the economy, because of the system, how the system works. So we have to have money if we want to live well. But here's the thing, here's the matter. You have to know because money can become a great thing in your life or can become the worst thing in your life. Uh, so what it depends on? Well, basically it depends on how much money do you think that making, you know, monthly, you can live well and peacefully? 
So what is that number for you? It could be, I don't know, uh, $10,000, $50,000. Well, everybody has a different number because this is, this is you know, measure like, like a thermometer. Some people, because, because their, their family uh, is rich, so they might say, well, $200,000 a month. Mm. But some people would say, just 10000 It's good for me. It works. So mm-hmm. because once you when, when you don't have that measure right, uh, you can become like a crazy person just looking for money and you're going to get lost in that. Mm-hmm. And that's that's going to waste your life because money, it's not everything. Money, it's a really powerful tool. Yeah, absolutely. And you just have to understand money just as a tool, not, not as everything else. So. Well, I don't know. Money is just like a, like a glass of water. You use it to drink water. That's all. Money uh, helps you to cover your basic needs. So that's the that's the first one that you need to reach. Cover your basic needs, and and after that, just have a just have your thermometer. Well, just like okay, I think that if I have this money, I can live without any problem. I'm not gonna look for money because money it's not gonna be important for me anymore because I'm just making this exact number of money. And when, when you don't think about money, you can think about better and more important stuff in your life, you know? So you just have to reach that. In my case, I want to be, uh, I want to reach that financial freedom. You know, I want to invest my money. I want to create a lot of uh, incomes. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it's it's important topic for me just to to cover my needs. But money, it's it's not the most important thing in my life because it's just a tool. For me, the most important thing is control my mind. You know, success. Money is just a secondary thing in your life. But yeah, it is important nowadays. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I I uh, I think about money very often, but I don't obsess over it. The reason that I want money, why I try to learn so much about money, why I try so many different ways to generate income is because I want the freedom, like you said. I want the freedom that money can give me. I want to have money so that I don't have to think about money ever again. And just imagine if you don't have to think about how am I going to earn my money this month, what you could do with that mind that you're the owner of. You know, you could start to put that mind to use to solve so many more problems, mm-hmm. help so many more people. You know, if if I didn't have my job where I work 12 hours, you know, imagine how much more content I can make. Imagine how mm-hmm. many more people we could reach, how much more good we could do in the world. So yeah, I, I, money is very important to me, but it's because I'm searching for that freedom. Yeah. And I think having enough, like you said, to meet your needs, makes you a better person not that money makes you better but having that freedom and that peace and not the stress that does make you a better and more generous person exactly Mm -hmm. okay great let me see what is something that you have never done that you would like to do in your future a new experience well what would you like to do thing that you are very interested in trying uh travel around the world because I, I you know honestly i've never been to i never been overseas before um and languages are a tool that you know allows me to they allow me to just get in touch with people easily and also i believe I truly believe that in order to to have a deeper connection with with local people, you have to speak their language. Mm-hmm. So that that's one of the the main reasons why I'm learning a couple a bunch of languages just just because I want to be able to to talk to a local without any problem and and connect with their language and just try to understand in a way that it's not possible using my mother tongue mm-hmm. uh, so yeah while i'm traveling 
I'll love to do it. Just use all my languages while traveling. Okay, cool. Yeah, like you said, I mean, look at this conversation. Uh, look at how you've been able to express yourself with a native speaker. You know, we, we've talked about some some deep ideas and uh, imagine had you never learned English, we would not be able to connect in this way. So that's very, right. very cool. All right, so I know you've you've got a lot of goals. Do you have a big dream for your future? Where do you want your life to be as, as you grow? Where do you see your life going? Hmm. Okay, somehow I want to I want to run my own business related to languages. And that I see myself working remotely from anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't like to to you know to be attached to to a job where I just have to go physically and just to be in an office. I don't like it. So I would like to have my own business and at the same time traveling. And I see myself, you know, with my own family. I mean, at least with my girlfriend, just just traveling, being together. And it doesn't matter. But well, maybe we're gonna have just a couple of houses in several countries <laughs> because we're gonna be traveling. Um, but I just want to be free. I just want this freedom of. You know, uh, I just want to do many things and I just want to feel free to work from anywhere and at the same time helping people with all the knowledge that I can afford, you know, to this humanity. Just that's what I think, you know, because that the more you help, uh, the better you feel and uh, the better you understand that. If we are here, if we are human beings, I mean, we're here just to help each other, not to be selfish or arrogant or, well, that's how I see the world, the whole Earth, Earth planet, it's, it's my home. And the fact that I study science, I feel really small. <laughs> when, when I see, you know, all of these cosmos, when I see the galaxies, it's like, man, you know, look at that little tiny, uh, I don't know, atom, atom in the in the cosmos. It's nothing. And in that nothing, you feel arrogant? You feel the best? Uh, I don't think so. So, yeah, that, that's you know, a little bit of my thoughts. Okay. Now I have one, one other question, one last question for you, since you're, you're into science and the universe. Uh, and this is a, a strange question sometimes. Do you believe that there is other life in the universe? That's what a good question. Um, okay, so look at this. Uh, the universe, it's so big that not even, I mean, nobody knows how big is it because all the time is expanding itself. Well, Earth, it's little, it's very little, it's, it's small, it's nothing in this whole cosmos, in this whole space. So, if, if there was only life on Earth, it would be such a waste of time of the space. <laughs> I mean, I don't know aliens, I don't know life beyond, but I just don't like, well, I, I don't deny the possibility that there is life beyond other planets and other galaxies because Earth, it's nothing. There's many galaxies out there. So what, what makes you think that you're the only one alive? <laughs> uh, that's what I think. Okay, it's a, it's a very cool question. I think a, a good thought exercise. Okay. I've thought about it much myself and I, I enjoy the topics like that. All right, my friend, those were all the questions I have for you today. Is there anything you would like to ask me? Uh, well, actually, I'm very curious. Like, well, what do you do? You, you said that you work 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So I work for a steel company, uh, okay. one of the steel companies in America. And it, it pays OK. You know, there's good benefits for my son and stuff. But the best thing about my job is that I have some free time there. 
So okay. example, if I'm working 12 hours, sometimes I might have one hour, sometimes I might have two hours free at my job. And I'll use that time to read, to become more intelligent, to learn my languages. So there's pros and cons with it. Uh, uh, like you, I would like to move into my own business and generate a uh, very healthy income with my languages and what I enjoy doing. That's the goal. That's where I'm going and why I do all this extra because right now it's like I have at least two jobs. You know, I, uh, I do full time the YouTube three videos each week. I do these conversations. That's a lot of work editing, uh, recording. And then I'm also a single father. My son lives with me. So I'm trying to juggle a lot of things right now. But I, like you said, I'm trying to be calm in the storm and control this. And I know that I'll end up in a good place. Oh, wow. Well, I really wish you the best, man, because you deserve it. Well, you know, it's being a single father. I mean, imagine it's, it's not easy. It's hard. Well, I, personally, I don't have any kids, but. I just imagine like how hard it would be. Oh, so you know, there's actually something funny that I was I was watching uh, your last video before this meeting, and then you, you were in the forest with this camera person. <laughs> that, that, that was so funny, man. Because uh, when she laughed, her laughter was really contagious. I was like, well, I, I didn't see her, but it was so funny, and it was. Uh, <laughs> you know, when it started, like, oh, I don't know what to ask you. So she's going to ask me, like, a couple of questions. And then you were just walking. It's like, okay, like, let's see what kind of questions. And and I, I could tell that she's learning English with you. That's amazing, man. Um, but yeah, that, that, that was so funny. You know, I like the way that you upload this kind of videos. It feels, like, more natural, more human. It's not everything prepared, per se. Um, so yeah, man, that's, that's so cool. That's so amazing. And I'm really glad that, uh, you have having success with your YouTube channel. And, uh, as I told you before, I'm going to keep promoting your channel because I think it's, it's a really powerful tool that you can use in your advantage just to keep on learning your, you know, type language, English. Um, so more than ask you a lot of questions, I just want to thank you for that great job and it just it's an inspiration for a lot of people and honestly i just wanted to to have this meeting with you just to to be an inspiration as well to to your subscribers that i mean if you want to learn a language you can do it it, it is possible so uh the only barrier that maybe you have it's your own mind remember that and with your help, with all your videos, with your wisdom, with all your advices, it's it's so wonderful just to, to be on YouTube and, fi and find like a very safe and nice space where you can just have fun with learning. So yeah, I really thank you so much. And I'm gonna keep using your videos as an example to, to teach my students. Excellent, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate your kind words. And this this conversation was really a pleasure for me. Uh, it's, it's very nice to hear a young man thinking in these ways, and I, I, I would wish you success, but uh, you don't need my wishes, my friend. I, I see that you're on your way. You're, you're doing very well, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again in the future and see, what, see where you're going. I, uh, I really enjoyed speaking with you, so thanks so much for sharing this, this great conversation with me. I really appreciate it. All right, Kyle, I'm in. Same, same here. It's, it's everything very nice. And I really appreciate your time because as we were saying, time, it's valuable. Uh, so yeah, really appreciate your time, man. And thanks for having me here on your YouTube channel. And I mean, if, if you need me to do something else in the future, just, just let me know and it'll be a pleasure to, to help you out. Okay. Awesome. For everybody watching, if you would like to have a conversation like this with me, I'll leave my email down below in the description. Send me an email and we'll make a video like this. All right, my friends. Como siempre, muchísimas gracias por ver y nos vemos pronto. All right. All right. All right.